The S&P 500, as well as many of the major averages, really moving to the upside this year. The S&P up more than 7%, a lot of this rally, driven by just a handful of tech stocks, very similar to the story that we were talking about last year. So is the market nearing bubble territory, and how should you position yourself ahead of that? We want to bring in Paul Dietrich. He is the chief investment strategist with B. Riley Wealth. Paul, it's good to see you here, and you lay it out. Pretty straightforward in your most recent note, you say that people need to be aware of the fact that we are near the bubble territory. The stock market bubble is about to burst, is exactly how you put it. So we've been seeing this dramatic run up in stocks right now. When you say it's about to burst, what's that going to look like? What should investors be doing today? Well, I was managing money back uh, during the dot com. Uh, bubble. And um, I can tell you that the stock market can go up, you know, even though there are no fundamentals, uh, it's all momentum uh, for a long period of time. But when it does burst, it usually bursts quickly. And so that's uh, what we're looking at. I, I, I've analyzed the stock market from just about every traditional analysis that that you can do to determine whether it's overvalued or undervalued and uh, uh, every single indicator seems to tell us that we're in a historic historic bubble uh, but how long it can go uh, that's a good question uh, because it certainly went on longer than I expected back uh, in 2000 2001 and uh, you look at things like price earnings ratio I mean we haven't seen a gap between the the PE for the S&P 500 and the price of the S&P 500 since uh, the internet bubble uh, back uh, in in 2000, and um, and then you look at something like the uh, the 200 day moving average, and there's a 13 percent gap, which is historic. Uh, that's what the that that's what the S and P 500 would have to go back to. Uh, it would have to drop 13 percent from right now uh, to get back to its 200 day. Uh, moving average. Uh, you look at other indicators and they're all the same. They're, they're, we're literally in historic territory. And it's hard to look at that and say that uh, we're not going to see a major, major correction coming. Now is not the time to be putting new money into the market. Hmm. Paul, so when things feel bubbly like this, number one, what is the biggest indicator that you've looked at that sent off flashing lights and, and, and signals and does that essentially initiate a, a mindset for a lot of shorts to enter into this picture too? Well, I, I'm sure that every analyst and chartered financial analyst is looking at all the different valuation uh, uh, methodologies and uh, and they've got to come to the same conclusion because there's just no ambiguity here. Uh, it, it is bizarrely overvalued in most of these things. And so you're seeing the smart money right now uh, moving massive amounts into cash. I mean, we saw Jeff Bezos sell $8 billion worth of Amazon. Uh, uh, Zuckerberg last week sold a billion dollars of, of Meta. Uh, it's not that they don't believe in their companies. They do. They're just, they know that it's just completely overvalued. And if they sell it now, uh, they can buy it back cheaper later. And uh, so uh, the Walmart family just sold, I believe, 4.5 billion uh, in Walmart stock. Warren Buffett has sold his stocks of the companies that he doesn't wholly own, a lot of them, and he's created a $158 billion um, um, uh, cash hoard so that he can use that. So uh, we're also looking at corporate cash and it, it's historically at its highest level ever. So this is why, you know, you ought to, maybe they know something that we don't know uh, as average people. Yeah, and but then there's also the flip side that a lot of people are really questioning whether or not that even signals the end of this rally that we have seen. Paul, I want to ask you though, in terms of what is going to trigger this correction that you are expecting, what is that one event that you think is going to cause this massive reversal? 
That's a really good question. And uh, because most of the triggers, if you look back at previous recessions, were not really anticipated. Um, you know, not many people saw Lehman Brothers collapsing uh, and uh, in the 2008, 2009. Uh, we didn't see the the points that uh, that brought the internet bubble to, uh, you know, where it dropped. You've got to remember the S&P dropped 49 percent peak to bottom uh, after the internet bubble. And um, so I, I think that it could be uh, a geopolitical uh, issue, uh, certainly if oil prices go up or if, if oil were, you know, stopped being shipped through the Straits of Hormuz because of the Houthi rebels, that would increase inflation. Hmm. The Fed would be forced to raise rates. That could be a trigger. I think another trigger that's quite possible is um, is basically the refinancing of commercial real estate. There's like trillions coming up in the next 18 months that need to be refinanced. 70% of it's done by regional banks. And if you look at regional banks, they're not as well capitalized as the too big to fail uh, banks. And all you need is, uh, you know, a couple of them just not you know, not having the capital uh, if there's a run on the banks uh, because of the uh, uh, some of the problems they're having with the real estate that they 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 have financed and uh, can't be refinanced. So th these are possible things. I see this uh, if we do have a recession. I see it as a very mild recession, hmm. uh, very similar to to the dot com recession in two thousand one and two. Huh. People forget that, that was a very mild recession. We had two quarters of negative GDP growth, right. where we never even went down one percent. Uh, but the the thing that people don't understand is that the stock market can really go down in a mild recession uh, because because of the dot com bubble was so big yeah. uh, and it ran up so high um, basically you saw a 49% drop well, uh, in the S&P 500. Well, yeah, Paul, I mean, we're, we're, I got my praying hands emoji ready that we don't see some of those exogenous events here. We're going to be tracking it extremely closely, as we know you will as well, and any of the market implications. Paul Dietrich, who is the B. Riley Wealth Chief Investment Strategist. Paul, thanks for taking the time this morning.